friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Josie and you can also know me as Sir Plants a lot from over on Instagram, so go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Today we are talking about the worst thing that could probably ever happen to you as a plant parent and that is thrips, because they are the worst. If you've never had thrips before and you're just here to educate yourself, then I want you to pause this video right now and pray that you never get these creatures because if you're here and you already have thrips or you think you might have thrips then nobody deserves this kind of pestilence nobody i wouldn't wish it on the worst of my enemies mealy bugs maybe the reason i want to talk about thrips is because i have had them i have actually been able to get rid of them or at least I think <laughs> I have been able to get rid of them. I haven't seen any for like a solid couple of weeks, so fingers crossed. Yeah, so I've personally had thrips and I've got a lot of footage to show you on how to identify the signs, how to identify the actual thrips, how to potentially get rid of them, all that kind of stuff. Let's get started. So first of all, I just want to list a couple of things for why I think that thrips are the worst. So let's see. The worst part about having thrips is most definitely the fact that they can fly. Now, when you get mealybugs, when you get scale, and you know, it's possible for them to spread on other plants of yours if you have them like in close proximity to each other. But if you have thrips, it doesn't matter how far your other plants are. It does not matter because they're gonna find a way to just fly over there and munch on it and just ruin your entire life. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that thrips can actually reproduce asexually, which means that they don't have to in order to have babies, which is even worse when you consider that they can actually lay up to 80 eggs at a time. 80 eggs. Oh my god. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Oh. So thrips can actually live up to 45 days, which means that I don't know how many times they can lay eggs, but if they can lay eggs every single day, that is a lot of eggs. So for that reason, when you think you have thrips or you know you have thrips, you need to act as quickly as possible because if you don't, bad things are gonna happen to you. And another reason that thrips are the worst is that they are actually able to develop resistance to insecticides, which is just great. So uh, you can be spraying them with your favorite insecticide, but it is very likely that they're actually gonna develop resistance to it and after a while your insecticide is gonna be useless and you're just gonna be covered in thrips. And also once you actually get thrips it's really really difficult to get rid of them. Some information on thrips besides why they are the absolute worst. So there are about 6,000 species of thrips. Thank you Wikipedia for providing this information. As there are about 6,000 species I'm not gonna present each and every one of them obviously but it might time on this earth I have identified two main types of thrips and that is light thrips and dark thrips. I'm gonna show you images of both so that you can see what I mean. On my houseplants I have had light thrips which are worse in my opinion because they are more difficult to identify because they kind of blend in with the environment whereas the dark thrips like when you see something that dark on your plant you're like <laughs> Hang on a minute, what is that? <laughs> and when we're talking about thrips, it's actually thrips for both singular and plural. So you can have a thrips or you can have multiple thrips. It doesn't really make much sense, but this is what I learned. So I'm just gonna distribute that information. Typically they are about one millimeter long, which I don't know how, how much that is in inches, like 1 25th of an inch. Seriously, like, the imperial system, I just do not understand it. Like, how do you know what a 125th of an inch is? Like, I, I'm not saying an inch or half an inch. Like, I can, you know, imagine that even though I've grown up using the metric system, but 125th of an inch. Anyway, moving on, rent over. So usually they are about one millimeter long, but they can also be up to 1.4 centimeters long, which is, that is kind of, 
terrifying. But um, I don't think those thrips are common with houseplants. I think those are, you know, outdoorsy thrips that feed on like, I don't know, barley or something and that's why they get so beefy. Yeah, so let's get to actually recognizing the signs that you might have thrips. So other than seeing the actual bugs themselves crawling on your plants. You can typically find them on the underside of your plants, like with most pests really, and that is especially on new growth because they like nice and tender parts of your plant, so if you notice something crawling on your new growth um, is possible that it's thrips. The way that I should have known that I had thrips was that my plant, my tenanthi, this one, actually grew in with leaves that were kind of wonky. Originally I thought that I forgot to water this plant and, and maybe that the humidity wasn't high enough because normally like when you have crispy edges on uh, Marantesii, it's usually a sign of low humidity. So I didn't really think much about it. The reason that you have these crispy leaves from thrips is because they actually release some sort of enzyme into the leaves that turns it into mush so that they can later on eat it. It's like when spiders inject those enzymes into their prey so that they can just <laughs> suck up their insides. It's so gross, I'm sorry. But that's the reason that happens. So um, it's not necessarily, you know... Um... <laughs> So that's the reason that happens, um, it's because the thrips are actually feeding on the plant but not necessarily like chomping on the plant but they are sucking up the juices from the plant and in order to do that they need to convert the insides into good juicy thrip snack. The second very clear sign is seeing actual bite marks on your plants. Now that is the reason that I actually finally found out that I had thrips. I noticed these thingies on there, which you can clearly see that they are like little dot type things, which are bite marks. This is what thrip bite marks look like. So after I saw that, I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> What's going on here? But yeah, bite marks on your new growth. That's also a clear sign. One of the probably clearest signs that I should have uh, taken note of that I didn't was that... <laughs> I'm so embarrassed to actually talk about this, but um, maybe it's gonna help one of you, so that's why I'm gonna say it. When I first like saw a sign of having thrips, it was when I was watering one of my plants and uh, at the bottom of the pot I saw like a bunch of things crawling around and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and back then I didn't really, you know, think that I could possibly get thrips. But when I saw that crawling at the bottom of the pot I just thought they were fungus net larvae, which <laughs> turns out <laughs> they were not. <laughs> When I saw those larvae, I um, sprayed them with insecticide because thrips or fungus gnats, either way, I wanted them to die. Most of them died, luckily, but uh, what I didn't do was I didn't check the foliage and then I got an infestation. So <laughs> if you see a bunch of larvae crawling on the bottom of your pot, Check your plants, people. I don't know what it is about Marantisii, but like all of these girls, these are the only plants that actually got thrips, as far as I know, anyway. So um, if you think you have thrips on one of your non-prayer plant plants, then check your prayer plants because most definitely they're gonna be munching on these ones. I don't know what it is about these that they're such pest magnets. I don't know if like they're really yummy or the foliage is so nice and thin that they can just bury their eggs in there so easily. If you're gonna have thrips, it's likely that they're gonna appear on one of your pr prayer plants. Let's talk about how you can actually get rid of them. So I'm gonna tell you how I got rid of them, uh, but I do have to say I was really really lucky because despite finding out about them like quite later on I think between the time that I saw those larvae crawling on the bottom of the pod and the time that I actually realized that I had thrips it could have been like I don't know three weeks maybe even then luckily enough um, as soon as I realized I moved them upstairs to my bedroom where I don't have any other plants I isolated all of these prayer plants because 
here in the living room they were living quite close together so I was pretty sure that all of them were infested and what I did I asked a bunch of people how to get rid of thrips um, in the best way and a lot of people said to just bring it into the shower give it a good soak all over the place and then uh, soak it up nicely all of the leaves all of the stems I did that with this plant only, actually, at first. When I first found thrips, I knew it was on this plant. I wasn't 100% sure it was on the other ones, so it actually took me a while before I moved all of them upstairs into isolation. <laughs> don't do that, just move all of them into isolation. When I did the treatment, uh, I only treated this plant um, the first time because the other two plants weren't ready to be watered yet so I was too scared to overwater them and that's why I didn't want to shower them and you know soak them up so I probably would have done that now because it's like you're trading off between losing one plant for losing all of your plants or most of your plants and sure enough a week later I found even more thrips so at that point I just I wasn't having it I was just like no I'm getting rid of them here and now. Since I wasn't really believing in the soap method, what I decided to do, which I think is what saved my plants, was that I actually watered these three plants that were infested with a mixture of water and hydrogen peroxide. And I haven't seen any thrips since. Knock on literally everything. I did see that some other creatures crawled out of the soil uh, that weren't thrips that also died unfortunately but hey like Lord Farquaad said some of you may die but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I would only say that if you do use hydrogen peroxide you should make sure that you fertilize your plants soon after because it's literally gonna destroy everything good in your soil. So other ways that you can actually get rid of thrips. Number one thing that I would say is forget about neem oil like <laughs> don't <laughs> Don't even reach for it because neem oil is not gonna do anything for thrips. Like literally anything. Uh, obviously you can use some kind of a pesticide, uh, which is what I did. That didn't necessarily help and also like I said, thrips can actually develop resistance to insecticides, which is just great. The best way to get rid of thrips, I think, is what I've heard other people do, which is watering your plants with systemic insecticides. So I know bonite is a systemic that a lot of people use. I'm not sure if it's available in the Europe. I haven't been able to find it here, but if you're not from Europe, then good for you, I guess, because you can get bonite. Mm -hmm. The way the systemic works is that your plant literally sucks it up from its roots into the foliage, into the stems, into everything, so that when the pests actually munch on your plant, it's gonna die. If you want to have like the best chance of getting rid of thrips or pests in general, I would definitely consider investing into systemic. You can not only use it as damage control once you already have pests, but you can also use it as a preventative, which I should be doing, but I haven't really been able to find a systemic, so I'm not really doing it yet. I would say definitely if thrips are your problem, forget about like everything else and just invest in a good systemic insecticide. When you're looking for the systemic insecticide, you need to make sure that the active ingredient in there is the... Bovaria bassiana fungus, because apparently that's the one that's effective against thrips eggs and thrips larvae. I'm gonna put it here on the screen uh, because I'm pretty sure I didn't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> when you're looking for a systemic that isn't bonite, make sure that this fungus is in the active ingredients because otherwise it's possible that it's not going to help you with your thrips infestation. Another way that you can try to get rid of thrips is by using hydrogen peroxide like I did. I was just like, I don't want to worry about this anymore, so it's just like and watered with the hydrogen peroxide, but it can be it can be quite detrimental to your plants if you either use too high of a percentage of hydrogen peroxide or you don't dilute it enough. And of course, it's also gonna kill everything good in your soil. Another way that you can try to get rid of thrips is beneficial insects. There's numerous types and, you know, species that you can use for that. I know that the most common ones are beneficial nematodes. 
nematodes, nematodes that feed on the larva and the eggs and everything. There's also green lacewings that are quite popular. You can also use ladybugs if you want to be like really eco-friendly. Just go outside, catch a bunch of them and release them all over the place. One thing to say about beneficial insects is that you need to know which species of thrips you are dealing with so that you can, you know, look up whether this specific beneficial insect is actually a predator to the thrips that you have because if you just buy random beneficials and you're not sure if it's gonna eat your thrips then you're just gonna waste your money your thrips aren't gonna go away and your poor beneficial insects are just gonna starve so um do your research another thing about beneficials is that this isn't my personal experience but a friend of mine who has like 250 house plants or something like that she has a thrip infestation or she just continuously has thrips and <laughs> she actually bought some beneficials and released them in her house to try to you know <laughs> get rid of thrips but the problem was that the infestation was too big that the beneficials just couldn't eat all of them <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny. Yeah, that's just one thing to put out there that it might aid you in thrips management, but it's probably not gonna get rid of them. That's more for like the pest management rather than the getting rid of thrips. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. I would very much appreciate it. Also go ahead and follow me on Instagram at SirPlantsLot and TikTok if you have TikTok and you're into that kind of thing. And I'll see you here for my next video. Bye!